From the land of not-so-frozen lakes, this is 10,000 Takes, brought to you by Minnesota Score Radio. Wally and Eric back for yet another week as we slice and dice the always busy, always topical Minnesota sports scene. And Wally, uh, certainly that is the case now. The mayhem known as March Madness is upon us. A lot of things we can get into, so I'm going to let you choose the opening topic. I know you don't want to talk about the NFL Combine oh or boy. the NFL New Year, which is coming up in a few days. I know you have an NFL New Year's oh. Eve bash oh, planned yeah. Yeah. in your uh, man cave as you hunker down. So pick the topic. Um, well, as you said, the, the madness of March is here. Um, and certainly at the high school level, the big story right now is the Boys State High School Hockey Tournament, the crown jewel, I think, of the uh, Minnesota high school tournaments. And we'll get into that a little bit more. we got Lou Nanny as our guest coming up. He is going to finish out his broadcasting career <laughs> of the state hockey tournament, 60 years in the making, by the way. Um, that'll end this weekend for him. So uh, we'll talk to Louie about that. But I thought we would start out with your Minnesota Timberwolves. Um, they have been at or near the top of the Western Conference basically all season long. And while there's a lot of good to talk about, there are some red flags, I think, as they head down the stretch here because, you know, they're going to have to do what they can to get home court advantage, I think. And, you know, obviously the main goal is to win this thing, right? To win the West and to get into the NBA Finals and then win the Finals. But um, I think to get there, the more home court advantage they can come up with, the better off they're going to be. And right now, I think that there are some red flags for sure. Well, I, you know, this is far from a slam dunk. I, I mean, because the team's trying to catch Minnesota, Denver, reigning NBA champs, L.A. Clippers, very good, won a one-point game against the T-Wolves a few days ago in Minneapolis. And then you look at Oklahoma City, which to me – when you look at the Thunder and you look at the T-Wolves, they're kind of a reflection of each other, young, bold, and brash teams on the upswing. But, you know, I think the Timberwolves just got to keep doing their thing, tweak a few things. You know, the loss to the Clippers, that's not a cardinal sin. The one to Sacramento in overtime last Friday, I was at that one. Hey, the Kings aren't a bad team. They seem to have Minnesota's number. I think the, the main thing is – Continue to grow up and be smart in your decision making. Limit the complaining to the referees mm -hmm. because that that's known around the association. Now, you and I talked to Gary Trent Sr. on the radio a few days ago. Yes. He said all these officials, it's it's a little fraternity. They talk no amongst each other and they label players who are whiners. If you had to pick two things that you're concerned about and two things or two reasons rather that you think that the Timberwolves can and will advance to the NBA Finals, what would those two things be on either side? Positive and negative. I'll start with the glass being half full. If right. they can play the kind of lockdown defense they do when they're hot and when they're winning, they can beat anybody. And let's give some props to Rudy Gobert. How in the world is this guy not an NBA All-Star? Yeah. It just goes to show you in the association for that farce of an All-Star game, they don't value what he brings Boy, to the floor, sure. and that is block shots, that is, uh, you know, in the paint buckets, putbacks, domination on the block. Changing shots. Altering shots, yeah. exactly. So Rudy G should be an All-Star. He's a big reason why they're playing as well as they have this season. I think one of the concerns would be the competition they're going to face in the West. I, you, look, it's a razor's thin margin between one through four, and then you go to the bottom four and the play-ins. You know, a team like Sacramento, if they play Minnesota or Dallas, I think they're going to feel like, hey, we can take these guys down. So they're going to have to focus every night. And you know, in the postseason, things grind to a halt. It's more physical, and it's a chess match from game to game. You're going to have to play smart. Hard physical basketball, and they're still untested in that regard. Yeah, and you know who knows? They might run into the Lakers. I mean, they oh. still have LeBron and AD, yeah, that's right? True. And, and your guy and Delo. I was gonna say mm. Delo's uh, heard what you've said about him. Well, he's motivated. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather have Michael Conley. Yeah. I'm sorry. Give me Michael Conley eight days a week and twice <laughs> and, on Sunday. And if the Lakers move on. Listen to what he says then. <laughs> okay. Well, no, I, mean, I still want Michael Conley. By the way, they got him for. Another they're two years after this year, too. All right, here's my here's my spin. Um, on the positive side, 
Um, I like the pickup of Monty Morris. I think that he has been uh, just what the doctor ordered. He gives them a little more size than they get with Jordan McLaughlin. Now, they could still use Jordan McLaughlin here and there, but I think they give him more size so he can defend better. He gives them a better look on the defensive side of the ball when they don't have Michael Conley in there, okay? Um, And I also like Nas Reed coming off the bench. I think that those two are factors that we're going to have to think about because depth is a huge deal. You just talked about it. Things grind to a halt, okay? So if things are grinding to a halt, you got to have some depth, man, because as we saw just a few days ago, uh, Timberwolves did not have Carl Anthony Towns for the majority of the game against Portland. Now, they ended up winning the basketball game. Portland's a terrible team, but they needed somebody to come off the bench, and in this case, it was Nas Reed. Came off and hit, was four for four from beyond the arc, which he can and will do for you. So I think that those two guys coming off the bench, those are my positives going forward. The negatives are, you already talked about it. we got to stop harping on the officials, particularly Anthony Edwards. Ant-Man, Cut it out. Please zip it. Yeah. Just play basketball. Well, and the body language, too. Right. These refs see that. And as I said, they're, they're a tight-knit group. The other thing is, and I think the fans have brought it all season, you go to a lot of games, so do I. Yeah. Target center gets loud, yes. even though they have tarps in the upper deck. Those fans are hungry. You've got to keep them involved. You can't give away a home game in the playoffs. Yeah, so it goes back to what you said. Home court advantage. How about take the tarps down? Let more people oh, into your building. Lord. A-Rod, Mark, Laurie, and Glenn. Yeah, well, Why wouldn't you want to cash some more checks? <laughs> I, yeah, I don't get that at all. Well, they're sitting courtside. They don't care. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, we have more to come, right? Yeah, we're going to talk with a hockey icon. Yes. Lou Nanny will join us. We'll talk pucks. Coming up, 10K Takes, your T-Wolves ticket. When you see somebody who's a great skater, you can see in their individual rhythm. My name is Christian Grunna. I am owner, head coach, operator, main instructor for Grunna Power Skating. We had a history of not just speed skating, but auto racing in our family, so we're always interested in being fast. I want every player that comes my way to develop their skills, but also grow confidence in themselves as a human being. I've been meaning to give you these for many years. I think they're perfect. <laughs> Maya? Oh, I love your earring. Why didn't you try these? It isn't just about vision. It's about care. Nobody cares for eyes more than Pearl. Get away to Lakeville, Minnesota, where your family will have tons of outdoor fun. Come for the nature and stay for the thrills. Bring the bikes, swimsuits, fishing poles, and walking shoes as Lakeville boasts trails, lakes, and beaches. Plan your itinerary at visitlakeville.org today. Welcome back. 10,000 Takes, Wally and Eric. And as promised, we're going to talk some hockey specifically the Boys State High School Hockey Tournament, which, of course, going on this weekend. And who better to talk with that about the State Hockey Tournament than the uh, the king of broadcast for the Boys State Hockey Tournament, Lou Nanny. Louis, uh, 60 years of doing this state tournament. Um, what's the first thing that goes through your mind when you think about the Boys State Hockey Tournament? How fast six years has gone by. It's just amazing <laughs> to me. I can remember just starting and and remember the team, you know, and, and the, the talent, the kind of play. You look at games then, they had maybe one line that was good, two defensemen, periods were 12 minutes long. It, it, it wasn't very deep. And you just see how the talents have morphed over years and years, how these teams are so big and strong and fast and deep and 17-minute uh, periods that, the hockey's just improved immensely, immensely. Louis, spin the clock back to 1964. How did you get involved doing the broadcast? I mean, you were playing for the Gophers then. The North Stars were still three years away from being uh, an expansion team. How did this happen? Well, I finished playing in 63, and I had a contract dispute with Chicago. And uh, I was 
basically working and I was doing some games on high school hockey there and, and uh, I have to tell you, you know, small station, I can't even remember. And I got a call from WTCN to come over and, and sort of, you know, see if I had any interest in broadcasting the state tournament. And uh, and I talked to them and I said, yeah, I do it. And they sent me down to talk to Mel Jass, get some tips on oh broadcasting. Boy. And that's how it started. <laughs> Wow, Mel Jazz, that there's a there's a blast from the past. Um, so, what were your thoughts when you saw this being your last year of broadcasting it? That your beloved Edina is back in, and I know you have to be impartial, but having your family all gone through the Edina system and to see the Hornets back in there again this year, particularly since they weren't really favored in that section and they overcome a very good Wyzetta team to get there. Uh, what were your thoughts when when you heard that they made it in? Well, you know, really, I, I I look at all the teams. It doesn't matter to me who's in unless my kids are playing. And when my kids and grandkids play, then that's different. So uh, I was happy to see it for Kurt because Kurt played for me, and he's a good friend, and and I, I'm always happy to see that. But I, I'm just interested in seeing good hockey for the tournament and have the fans enjoy it. And, and it doesn't matter to me who's playing. And the fact that I live in Edina, yeah, yes, that's, uh, you know, very nice. But... The Dinos had a lot of success, and I've seen them win a lot, so it's not as big a deal as uh, you might think because uh, I'm just going there and partially trying to bring the best to the fans. One second, let me close this door. <laughs> hey, he just closed the door to the penalty box. <laughs> yeah. You're, yeah. You're, you're in for five minutes, Louie. Hey, hey. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> game misconduct. Chan Hassan, I, I guess I always think of Prince and Paisley Park, but now we have to think of prep hockey with Chan Hassan, don't we? Hey, I was really happy to see uh, they get an opportunity. You know, they've they have never been there before, and they've got good teams. They took Minnetonka to an overtime game early in the year, so you know they're a good team. And it's always nice to have good teams in the tournament. And you have a team like White Bear coming in that hasn't won, gone past the first round on 19 tries. So there's, there's a lot of... Nice side effects, you know, and and Centennial won in football, and here they are a chance to win in hockey. Grand Rapids coming through right at the end in overtime. They were down two goals, and they've always had a great program. And then Centennial, whose team won the state championship in football, and now getting a chance to win in hockey as well. So a lot of good stories, you know. You know, Lou, when I think about the state tournament in the, in the times that I've been doing it on the radio over the last 30-plus years, um, the thing that comes to my mind or the game that comes to my mind, and people ask me this, what game sticks out? It's the Spihar game, the five overtime Apple Valley game. Is that, is that the one that uh, comes to your mind as well, or are there others? No, that, well, that especially, uh, you know, Maple Grove and Andover had a game two years ago. It was one of the best I've ever seen. Right. But Spihar getting a hat trick in every tournament was something too. But to have a team – like Apple Valley and another team like uh, uh, Duluth East play five overtimes and have so many quality chances in the overtime and not be able to score, and it goes for five overtimes. That game easily was the most memorable. Louis, you had a storybook uh, career, I mean, from Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, up in Canada, and then you wind up in Minnesota. Did you have any idea that Minnesota – worshipped hockey as much as your old country, Canada? I didn't even know where Minnesota was. When oh, boy. <laughs> so, I, no, I didn't have any idea like that. And when John got me down here and was taking me around, he said to me, Lou, if you come here, you'll never leave. I didn't know how prophetic that was going to be. And and uh, at that time, you have to remember, there weren't many high school teams and maybe 30, 40 in the whole state. Now we got over 160 or 70. You know, Mariucci was really the evangelist that went around and, and just begged and preached for cities and towns to build rinks and give the kids a chance to play. Why do you think, and you said the hockey is as good as it's ever been or better than it's ever been, and I don't disagree with that at all, but why do you think it has taken such leaps and bounds, particularly over the last, say, 20 years? Well... There's a lot of reasons. We got a lot of good coaches at young ages. We we got the facilities. Cities and towns have built rinks all over the state. And we've got the climate for it. And and when kids, you know, when they're young, 
if, if you're going to pick up a football, it's hard to throw a football if you're four or five years old. If the ball's too big or the basketball, well, they can hold a stick. And it's always fun to be in skates. So kids gravitate to that sport. And you don't have to be unusually big to play it. And, and they can play it at any age. And I think people that have had the chance to play hockey love to play hockey. And they'll play it as long as they can play it. And so it's a sport that you really enjoy practicing where I see some of the other sports that wouldn't have as much fun practicing. And and I think putting all those things together, kids have the opportunity to play, they take it and they, and they enjoy it. Louis, from the preps to the pros, I know, know you stay very connected to the game of hockey. The Minnesota Wild, it's, it's been a struggle. Uh, do they have a shot of punching a playoff ticket? Not really, no. I mean, I, I did a lot of studying of those uh, statistics when I was managing and if you got to march and and you were five points back usually a team never made it and now you, when you're 10 points back and the teams are playing their own conference guys every night somebody's winning so you might gain on somebody on the left but somebody on the right is winning and it's really you just don't make up that kind of, it, it would take like a 17 and 3 run to do it and that might just get you in by one point Oh, boy. <laughs> Jeez. All right, Louis, uh, your final thought. Um, as you walk away this weekend, what's, what do you hope to walk away with after your uh, final broadcast? What, what, what are those thoughts in your mind right now? Well, just that I hope the tournament's as exciting as it's ever been. Uh, we have a lot of surprises, a lot of great hockey, a great amount of enthusiasm, and fans enjoy it. I, I've had you know, all the joy in life of having to, chance to broadcast it so i'm not looking for anything for me to gain because i've i've already gained i've had tremendous experience and i just want people to have enjoyed the tournament yeah well you've been the soundtrack of the tournament we, we thank you for all the memories well thanks guys nice to be with you take care yeah, right. yep thanks Lou. Yeah. Yeah. thank <laughs> you right. Bye bye. he is lou nanny of course the former minnesota north stars player coach gm and longtime broadcaster of the state tournament. We're back with more after this timeout. Stay with us. Let your adventure begin in Lakeville, Minnesota. We have over 90 places to grab a bite to eat, and we're close to the Mall of America, Valley Fair, and the Minnesota Zoo, plus hotel packages and great rates. Visit Lakeville. We're serious about fun all year round. When you see somebody who's a great skater, you can see in their individual rhythm. My name is Christian Grunna. I am owner, head coach, operator, main instructor for Grunna Power Skating. We had a history of not just speed skating, but auto racing in our family, so we're always interested in being fast. I want every player that comes my way to develop their skills, but also grow confidence in themselves as a human being. I've been meaning to give you these for many years. I think they're perfect. Maya? Oh, I love your earring. Why didn't you try these? It isn't just about vision. It's about care. Nobody cares for eyes more than Pearl. It's March, it's madness, it's spring training, <laughs> baseball. Uh, we're only a couple weeks away from opening day, believe it or not. Your twins will open up in Kansas City against the Royals. Um, but they still have to shake a few things out between now and then. And to me, first and foremost, and I mean, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I'll beat a dead horse. They got to find out if Byron Buxton's going to be able to play Every day. I know they went out and got uh, Margot. They got Manuel Margot from the Dodgers, and that will certainly help. Um, you know, much like they had Michael A. Taylor last year. But we got to find out if Margot can give them what they need, and we got to find out if Byron Bucks is going to be able to play in the outfield every day, or at least most days. Yeah, I'm going to make a bold statement. Okay. Uh oh. This is the season Byron Buxton is blessed. With good physical health. Oh, I'm going to mark and this down. Write it down. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And he stays on the field. Because Let's here's see. what I think you'll see. This has okay. to bug him. 
right? He knows all the noise about being brittle and frail and all that comes with being Byron Buck. So he watches our show. Yeah, and he listens to our show and on he radio. Listens on and the he radio. pays attention probably to everybody else. And if he doesn't, his friends are telling him. <laughs> but he's a wonderful athlete when he's 100%. Yeah. We, we wouldn't debate it. You know, his average wasn't very good last year as a DH. He needs to be in the field, too. So he you does. don't think about every at bat. DH is a tough spot to be mentally if you're in a slump. But I think he will play north of 110 games. And I also think wow. that... You know, maybe game three in Kansas City, that ball that's hit the left center field and he's debating about crashing into the wall, he might he might back off just a bit if it's in the third inning and the score's 1-0. Now, if it's for the game, you know, to save it, that's different. I just think he's going to take care of himself but still go, you know, real hard. He's, he's going to find the balance. He needs to. Okay. Now, there's been plenty of talk about Royce Lewis, and if he stays healthy – plays third base next to Carlos Correa, that, you know, the Twins are going to be in great shape. And there's no debating that. He actually already hit a grand slam in preseason. That's his forte. It is. That's his deal. Get guys on base and they're over the fence for you. Um, But I do have a little bit of concern about Carlos Correa. Now, he battled through the plantar fasciitis last year, and he still came through for him in the postseason, particularly defensively, and he had a a couple of big hits, too, in the postseason. But... They need to keep him healthy as well. Can we get 140 games out of Carlos Correa would be the next question I have because without him out there, uh, that lineup changes quite a bit, and they change a lot without him out there at shortstop. Yeah, no question. And and let's face it, he, he commands a lot of salary. I mean, they're paying him a ton of money, and it's not to sit down on the bench. So, uh, hopefully, from his perspective, Carlos Correa will be back and better than ever. And I think if he's not battling the plantar fasciitis, you know, you could see a guy who returns to the superstar form in terms of statistics. The value he brings is defensively. Sometimes it doesn't show up and in that clubhouse. But he's got to be better with the stick in the regular season. No question. Okay. Um, this is a huge couple of weeks at Target Center, and I'm not talking about the Timberwolves. I am talking about the Big Ten invasion, uh, the women's Big Ten tournament here this week, and then next week the men's Big Ten tournament is here as well. Um, the Caitlin Clark factor. You, know, you talk about the Taylor Swift factor <laughs> with the NFL. Well, the Caitlin Clark factor with the NCAA tournament and the Big Ten tournament. This tournament is sold out, the Big Ten Women's Tournament. It's amazing. Yeah, it's remarkable. One person has sold out every game in that tournament in downtown Minneapolis, and kudos to Caitlin Clark. She's quickly become the Michael Jordan of women's basketball, (laughs) and her NIL money is about a million a year. The Indiana Fever, they're doing cartwheels in downtown Indianapolis <laughs> because they have the number one pick in that WNBA draft, and they're going to take Caitlin Clark, and she's going to put butts in seats in that Gainbridge Fieldhouse, a home of the Pacers and the Fever. I, I don't think you can pay her enough because of what she does. She's, she's a draw, and that's good for women's basketball. It's good for sports. Yep, she passed Pistol Pete. She's an Iowa Hawkeye. I know that bugs you. I just, I'm just not going to go to a building that's filled with those type of fans. Then you better avoid the Big Ten Women's Tournament. And I am. I'll be at the hockey. And the Final Four is in Cleveland, by the way, for the for the gals. Not going there either. All right, (laughs) we got takes of the day coming up next. Stay with us. I've been meaning to give you these for many years. It isn't just about vision, it's about care. Nobody cares for eyes more than Pearl. Finding the ideal place to stay is important for business travelers. Lakeville, Minnesota is conveniently located off I-35, just south of the Twin Cities with a variety of hotel choices. Lakeville offers convenient amenities such as shopping, walking trails, golf, and more. Our unique meeting spaces, historic downtown, live music, and over 60 dining options are sure to impress. Book your next stay in Lakeville and experience convenience, comfort, and quality. Find your perfect hotel at visitlakeville.org. 
10K Takes on television as we wrap up yet another episode. But before we say uh, goodbye, we're going to have takes of the day. We're going to find out uh, what your mood is. Are you a crusty curmudgeon, an angry American, a demanding diva? Or maybe maybe you're a happy camper. What is it today? Well, no anger today or this week. Uh, just some questions for you as to what you think the NCAA might do. Look, it is March Madness time. Big Ten tournament for the women here this week. Big Ten tournament for the men here next week. So lots of discussion about what the NCAA will do with that men's tournament going forward. Is 68 enough? I know you love expansion. Remember this NCAA tournament back in the day? I remember when it was 32 teams, and then they went to 48, and then they went to 64. Now you kind of have those play-in games, so you have 68. Well, there is discussion that they might go to and probably will go to at least 72, possibly 76, or maybe as many as 96 teams. Is that too much? Holy guacamole. Yeah, I think 96 is too much. <laughs> I, I I don't think they want to water it down because then they have to change the whole schedule. I think if they go to 72 and make it the first eight instead of the first four, I think that they'll <laughs> still be able to keep the same schedule, and they'll figure it out if it's 76. But no 96. Please don't do that to us. Uh, look, they already have some issues coming up. The NIT tournament, they can't find a home for it anymore. It was in New York a couple of years ago. Then it was in Las Vegas. And it's wandering to Indianapolis this year. And Fox Sports is coming up with the idea they're going to have their own tournament. So maybe <laughs> Fox will outdo the NIT. So, yeah, there are a lot of things in the cooker right now. And I think the NCAA is going to have to get out in front here and add more teams so that Fox doesn't outdo them and uh, make their tournament not insignificant, but uh, kind of just another tournament. All right, let's see what the mood meter says. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're a demanding diva throwing down the gauntlet at the NCAA. Well, good luck with that. They're not exactly a well-run, <laughs> well-oiled machine. No, they are the NCAA. not. NCAA, I've never liked them, to be honest with you. All right. Well, my take of the day, uh, as, as you probably uh, found out earlier this week, the Denver Broncos released. Russell Wilson. And let's just put it bluntly. Russ did not cook in Colorado. No. A couple years ago, Seattle sent him to Denver. A lot of draft picks involved. The Broncos extend his contract five years, like $250 million. So, Bleacher Report has come out now with the worst trades in NFL history. And does that move rank in the top four? We're going to find out. I have Bleacher Report's list here. All right. Fourth worst trade in the history of the Shield. The New Orleans Saints trade their entire draft to Miami to get running back Ricky Williams. Oh, boy. <laughs> that was a Mike Ditka production. And that was before marijuana was legal. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, you're exactly right. Uh, number three is the Wilson trade. Seahawks sending him to the Broncos. Now he's a free agent. Maybe he ends up wearing purple. Oh you boy. never know. All right, number two. This one stings a bit. The 49ers trading up to get quarterback Trey Lance. That wasn't that long ago. Right. And the Niners are getting barbecued for that. But number one, probably no surprise to anybody here in the Purple Nation, the Minnesota Vikings giving up a boatload of draft choices and players <laughs> to get Herschel yeah. Walker from Dallas. How'd that work out for you, Mike Lynn? <laughs> I'm glad you didn't have to look that one up. Uh, you don't know that one by now, man. No, that was three Super Bowl rings for the Cowboys. And on that note, we got to go. Let's FedEx out those Sankeys. One to Paul Langfellow, one to Rocky, Lou Nanny, David Weld. For Wally, I'm Eric Singh. So long. This is 10K Takes Your Sports Ticket. Thank you.